Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is July 19th and right now we are looking at the mid-level water vapor loop. Check out this trough of low pressure out over the Gulf of Alaska. We'll eventually be pushing towards Pacific Northwest, but we've got a few warm days to go before it gets here. And we've even got a fantasy a rainfall forecast here for west of the Cascades. Not great odds, but we'll take a look at those details coming up. And if nothing else, the trough is going to bring a nice cool down here for much of the region. This is looking at the visible satellite imagery, marine layer along the coastline there should be bouncing around and burning off during the day today there's the flat fire down here FLAT bringing some smoke drifting northbound there. There is an industrial fire, a mill fire going on down here across some of southwest Washington into Oregon, the Portland metro there, reducing air quality with that. And most of the forest fire smoke, the worst of it anyway, across central and northern BC, east of the Rockies through Alberta, a little bit trying to filter down into eastern Washington, down the uh, Fraser River uh, Valley Gap there a little bit as well. This is looking at Paradise Mount Rainier, nice blue sky, no thunderstorms expected, great day to be out there across the backcountry hiking. This is looking at that mill fire across uh, some of the near the Portland metro there. So if you're wondering where that smoke is coming from, there it is. This is from the National Weather Service Portland, taken from the office, I believe there. This is uh, National Weather Service Spokane. The heat returns Thursday and Friday. Look at the gradual cool down through this weekend and even more so as we go through the early portion of next week here. So yeah, we're going to peak out around 100 degrees or even plus for some areas there. Eastern Washington, Oregon coming up. This is Medford, Oregon. You can see the air quality alert red flag warning there's where that flat fire is down there a lot of this drifts northbound it's going to be a loft though and it's not going to be affecting areas at the surface most of the surface smoke drifting to the south and southeast this is looking at that the her the high resolution rapid refresh you can see that smoke bouncing around down there and if you look closely you can even see it picked up that mill fire there and brought and bringing some of that smoke down at the Portland Metro there, reducing some of the air quality there. So, yeah, it even picked up on that. And you can see some of this try to filter down in northeast Washington with some northeast winds, but not too bad anyway. I mean, not huge amounts of smoke, but yeah, you can see that flat fire there producing a decent amount of smoke there across southwest Oregon. Let's hope this isn't a sign of things to come across some of the Cascades over the next month or two. Now, Pendleton, Oregon. Check out some of these temperatures pushing 100 plus here for some eastern Washington, Oregon locations. And then this graphic shows nicely the gradual cool down as we go through early next week. This is hot temperatures Thursday through Saturday. This would be for western Montana. You guys know how to beat the heat. You know the drill here. And really, these temperatures peaking by the time you get towards Saturday for central Idaho and western Montana. Now, I've been testing this home weather station here. It's very affordable. It's all solar powered, ultrasonic anemometer. The thermometer is extremely accurate. The station has been lining up with much more expensive weather equipment. I highly recommend it. So click on the link down below there in the description if you want to save 10% off on this station. Now, looking at Seattle, 81 degrees here, 3 degrees above average, 78, the average high for this time of year. By the time we get to the 21st, we hit 79, and that is our peak temperature, our peak average temperature for this time of year. And you can see just how amazingly dry we are as we get towards the end of July. Look at this, only 17 hundredths of an inch, the max precip ever recorded on July 29th. Just an amazing amount. I mean, that is not a lot of precip once you move into the fall months, but the mid-latitude cyclones are very weak this time of year, and this is kind of a sign of it, and I'll show you why that is here in a moment. Now this is looking at the European. You can see the trough that we saw in the mid-level water vapor loop across the Gulf of Alaska. And you can see the ridge starts to push off to the east a bit here as this trough tries to make headway into the Pacific Northwest. Going to be bringing some onshore flow by the time we go into the later portions of the weekend coming up here and really going to cool down the Pacific Northwest as we go through the early portion of next week. Well, a lot of the rest of the country is fairly warm. I mean, look at this giant ridge here across from Arizona and New Mexico. So it is great living up here in the Pacific Northwest if you like these cool downs. I mean, this is kind of a savior here for those of you guys who don't like that broiling heat. This is like an 850 millibars, 5,000 feet. Check out this warm up here as we go through. This is Thursday afternoon, Friday, still above average aloft across the region, Friday night. But then you see that trough starting to spin this cooler air into the region here as we go through the early portion of the next week. So nice visual diagram of what's going off about 5,000 feet above us here across the region. Now, this is looking at the Northern Hemisphere here. I've been kind of showing um, the Northern Hemisphere and some cool maps that'll go along with it. But you can see we just don't have that much cold air across some of the Northern Hemisphere because we are in our summer months. The direct rays of the sun are above the equator. And, you know, we're just, we don't have that strong polar vortex up here. The Rossby waves are not strong. The temperature gradient along the mid latitudes is not that strong. And that's why we are so darn dry here across the Pacific Northwest during the, the time, this time of the summer months here on into later 
July. But now let's take a look where it is winter and you can see the big contrast and a clash in the mid-latitude cyclones of the southern hemisphere here. And that kind of flips when we go into our winter months here too. We get definitely much stronger, much more cold air and the bigger temperature contrast gradient. That's why we get all these storms and all that rainfall as you go through November, December and January, for example. So anyway, I hope that diagram helps a little bit there. This is six hour precip, mean sea level pressure. This is the GFS. So you can see that trough spinning out here over the Gulf of Alaska. And if you take a look here, you can see the system try to swing through here on Saturday, just kind of clip in Western BC here, not expecting anything Western Washington there. But then this next system rolls through here and it is trying to bring a little bit of precip into Western Washington, Southwest BC here as we go through the early portion of next week. We'll watch that one. It's purely fantasy at this point. I expect this forecast to change here and the strength of the system is going to become much more clear, of course, as we get closer to that event. This is Everett. You can see some of the ensemble members are picking up on measurable precipitation during this time frame the control run says no I don't think so and a lot of these ensembles are still dry this is Seattle just a slight signal for that system coming up here we'll see how this trends over the next day or two this is Vancouver BC you can see the further you go north the better chances you have for measurable precip the control run even shows two tenths of an inch and you can see that some of these ensemble members or at least a, a and more of them anyway show some measurable precip and uh, only a few of them are dry comparatively this is spokane not expecting much precipitation there as you can see just a couple random blips there and yeah not much weight in the way of precipitation expected coming up through the 10 plus day period here for spokane this is seattle metro gfs look at this it actually shows a tenth of an inch there but take that with a grain of salt this is purely fantasy at this point the main takeaway here is the nice warm up here coming towards the end of the week and then the trough rolling through here, then maybe bouncing back to some above average conditions there. But we'll see how this trends over the next few days. No promises on this precipitation yet. This is Everett, something similar here, and you can see the impacts of that trough through early next week here. This is Bellingham, staying a bit cooler here. They're going to be in the, under the influence of that system moving through kind of this weekend on Saturday a bit more than you can see the trough affecting the area. A little bit better chance of the precipitation the further north you get into Bellingham, southwest BC as well. This is Spokane Metro. You can see the trough having the impacts here as we go through early to mid portions the next week. Have some below average temperatures. Can't rule that out here with that trough coming through be a nice little reprieve from the warm temperatures there east of the Cascades. This is looking at daily two meter max temperature on the National Blend of Models. This would be for today, Wednesday. And then as we scroll through here, look at Thursday, nice and warm for Seattle. Look at the Willamette Valley into the low 90s, over 100 degrees for many areas for eastern Washington. We roll through Friday, Saturday, Sunday, still 80 or above. By the time you get to Monday, we get a bit of a cool down here. So uh, yeah, we'll see what kind of cool down this trough brings. But you can see we're definitely down about 10 degrees here from what was that Friday or Thursday's temperatures coming up. Then maybe a bit of a bounce back to the extended. But we'll watch that forecast and we'll see how this trough evolves. Is it going to? Can trend stronger here in the model runs or is it going to trend weaker here are we going to trend upwards in the precipitation in some of these model runs or down this is looking at six to ten day and you can see they're painting a little bit of above average chance here because that system will be trying to move through here wouldn't take much to put us above average precipitation wise again it is our dry time of the year across the region this is 8 to 14 day though and you can see the blow average signal here across much of the pacific northwest this is 6 to 10 day temperature probability outlook look at the heat as you go off to the south and east across some of the country here but a little bit of below average there showing up in the 6 to 10 day and this is the wider view of things here look at the pacific northwest just kind of a safe haven here the entire rest of the USA is in above average uh, temperature conditions here as we go through the 6 to 10 day forecast 8 to 14 day here we bounce back a bit and this is a seven day significant fire potential here not doing too bad northwest seven here you can see southern oregon cascades maybe some elevated fire danger there but not too bad across the region we get a little bit of an increase here as we bring some gusty winds across the areas that trough moves through and moves some more areas into the elevated risk there but no high risk as of right now this is, if you missed this, Nino 3.4. We are technically into moderate El Nino conditions here. And Nino 3.4 across the equatorial Pacific. That's where we measure those ENSO, the El Nino Southern Oscillation temperatures here. And you can see you've got Australia there. You've got South America. You've got Mexico and Hawaii here. So, yeah, you can see our long climb out of La Nina from last year into neutral and now El Nino conditions here. And we'll continue to watch how this evolves here over the next few months. 
Now, this is looking at those sea surface temperature anomalies, and this goes all the way through uh, through yesterday, I believe. But you can see the warm tongue existing across the equatorial Pacific, below average conditions off the coast of California. And I'll probably go over why this is here uh, coming up here in the next couple of months. We'll watch this evolve as we get closer towards the fall months. But anyway, yeah, trough will be rolling in here, but you got a few warm days in advance here and you cross your fingers for a little bit of precept. Maybe we'll get really lucky and get a couple hundredths of an inch here for Seattle and better chances the further you go north coming up. But we'll watch this system. We'll see how it trends over the next few days. And yeah, so anyway, we'll do this again tomorrow as always. And I may go out and chase dust doubles today for a little bit here. So we'll see how that goes. I'll check the forecast in a minute and... See if I'm going to head out there today. Maybe one more Dust Devil chase for this year here and try to make a best of the Dust Devil videos again. But anyway, um, yeah, so anyway, we will do this again tomorrow. I'll talk to you guys then, and I hope you guys are having a good day.